the Pirates of Penryn! Get in your sea legs. Righto, welcome to video number three of the trilogy. In this one we'll look at the kids and beginners version of the game and then move on to the two player variant. If there's any bits that don't make sense, you might well be advised to go back and have a little look through video number one, but we'll cover as much as we can here. So let's get the map set up for the beginners and kids. For this, you will need the following. The galleon mats and rum runner cards, the rum runner play in pieces, and the florin rum and crew packs. You will not need the tide maid, the windicator, the skull and crosswinds coin, the whirlpool pack, or dear old Morgor. These can go back into the box until you're ready to add them into your gameplay another day. So let's start by setting up the map. Separate your florins into the different denominations and shove them face up on the bank section at the bottom here. They do look lovely and shiny. Next take the crew deck, that's these fellas with all the fantastic piratey characters on them, and place them face down on the bit of the map marked crew. Right, so we got this nice shiny gold and a heap of scurvy pirates. How do the scurvy pirates get their hands on the loot? By selling this horrible rum in the local ports. They bought lots of it in their galleons, remember? Ah yes, the galleons. So they sail the galleons into the ports? No, the galleons is too big to fit down here. They gots to take the rum off their galleons, load it on their little rum runner boats and take M to port instead. So the little rum runner boats have got to be right next to the galleons for that to load in, right? Yep, right up on them. So we need the little rum runner plane pieces to go all on the matching coloured galleon spots on the map to make sure that loading can get underway and everyone can start sailing about selling rum. Perfect, looks like we're ready to see what's on those galleons and load some of it onto our rum runners. Big boat, little boat. Okie doggies, let's see what all these huge great galleons have arrived with. We need to get them stuck before we can load anything from them onto the little boats for transport to port. Yes indeed, these big galleons have arrived from the Caribbean carrying lots of rum, a few crew and not many florins. It is what you'll need to deal each player to put face down under their galleon mat. This stuff is stowed safe below decks. Twelve rum cards each. Don't worry about the different brands. Them in port can't tell the difference anyhow. Stow them face down under your galleon mat. If you got some left over because you're playing with less than five players, just chuck them in a box out of the way. Then we need to see who's aboard. Deal each player three crew cards face down and put these below decks with the rum underneath your galleon mat. You can look at them but don't show them to anyone else because you don't want them knowing how strong or not your pirates are. Then finally put a five florin card, two three florin cards and a single one florin card with the rum and the crew underneath your galleon mat. Now your big boat is all stocked and we can load from it onto your little boat. So imagine you're taking barrels of rum off your big galleon and putting them in your little run runner. First load is going to be four rum cards, all three of your crew cards and a three and a one florin card. This makes a total of nine. This is very important, shipmates. Your little rum run of boats are very small and can never have more than nine cards aboard. This means you'll have to go up and down to port a few times with small loads of rum rather than taking it all at once. You can only swap cards between your big and little boats when your rum runner playing piece is on your galleon spot. Remember that number, my hearties. Nine cards. Should be nice and easy because there's another thing that comes in nine. That's your moves. Now that the rum runners are loaded and ready to go, Let's look at moving across the map. Sailing and selling. On your turn, you get to move nine squares. You can move in any direction you like, including diagonally. You can ignore these whirlpools, and because we're not playing with the tide, you can sail on all the squares on the map, regardless of the shading. Here we can see the red talon on their merry way, then the Saracen gold taking their turn. Note that you can't sail through another player or occupy the same square as them. Ooh, the Saracen gold's made it to port. To be in port, you need to sail onto one of these squares with a brown outline. There's three in Falmouth, which is a big port with room for three boats. There's space for two boats at Flushing, and there's space for only one boat at Penryn up here. This makes it pretty competitive to get it in there. Yeah, and it's quite a long way from the galleons too. These two factors mean that it's tricky to sell your rum in Penryn, so they give you the highest price, 10 florins a barrel. Flushing's a bit close and gives you four florins a barrel, and Falmouth being very close with lots of space to dock in will give you just two florins a barrel. So let's see what the Saracen Gold gets up to now they're in port. There's two things you can do in port, and I'm gonna do them both. First, I'm gonna sell my rum, then with some of them fine profits, I'm gonna buy me some more pirates. How many barrels are you selling, me? Oh, one, two, three, four, is it? Right on, we pay four florins a barrel, so here's your 16 florin profit. Will you be wanting any more crew to protect you on the way back, or maybe pick a fight? 
bit of your own. Oh yeah, that sounds like a very good idea. But I want to keep hold of lots of gold, so I'll just have one this time, I think. Here's three florins into the bank. And here's the top three cards for you to choose your favourite. How do I know who's good? Well, count up the charm, these smiley faces, and the ferocity, these skull and bones, and basically the ones with the most are the strongest pirates. Great, I'll have you then. Proper job. Let's see what you can do. Your pirates. So you'll be wanting to know what your pirates can do for you. Yes, I reckon I'll start a fight on my way back to hopefully add to my already impressive hand of gold. Well, the Emerald Drake looks like a prime target, so when it's your turn again, let's sail on out and have a go at them. Here I am right next to them. I am going to let them know that I want to fight, and then I'm going to put on a mighty display of pirate power. Lay all your crew down, face up and count the total of all charm and all ferocity. At this point, your victim can choose to fight or surrender. If they surrender, you win. If they choose to fight, they lay down all their crew face up and count their totals. Oh my word, it is close. I can't believe they beat me by one. I be right vexed. Indeed, the person who declared the fight is not necessarily always the one who wins it. This time you lost me, Artie. So once both crews have returned to their rum runner hands, fan yours out for the winner to take two cards. The winner doesn't know which cards they be taking. Could be your best or could be your worst. Luck plays a big part here. The winner now has a decision to make. Since taking the two cards, they now have more than nine cards in their rum runner hand. They must decide which cards to throw overboard to bring them back down to nine. Take your worst cards and put them face down on Morgul's Horde. These cards are now out of play. There be more than one way to fight a battle though, Miartes. Let's take a look at dueling next. Pistol, Cutlass, Parrot. The other way you can try to steal things from your fellow players be by challenging them to a duel. A duel is a different way of fighting. This way wins you one card instead of two, but you don't need loads of strong pirates to be in with a chance. You'll see on the crew cards that they all have a pistol, a cutlass or a para in the top right hand corner. Some of them also have a symbol in the top left too, but you don't need to worry about that in the beginners and kids version. So what do these pistols, cutlasses and parrots mean? Well, they're this pirate's weapon of choice in a duel. Pistol beats cutlass, cutlass beats parrot, and through sheer cunning, parrot beats pistol. To fight a duel, you gotta sail up next to your victim late before, then rather than put all your crew face up, you choose one pirate and place them face down. Your opponent does the same. Once your duelists have been chosen, turn them both over to see who wins. Pistol beats Cutlass, ha ha, I win this time. The duelists then return to their rum runner hand and the winner takes one card in a blind pick. Remember to stick to the nine card maximum. I'm okay, I don't have to throw anything overboard because I was only carrying seven cards after losing earlier. <laughs> Right then, that's enough fighting and stealing. Let's seal our gold back to our galleon to get it stowed safely before any other blighter tries to nick it. Stowing your loot for victory. I sail back to my galleon where I can finally swap cards between my rum runner hand and what's below deck on my galleon. I gotta get all my gold safe and reload my rum runner with some rum and pirates for my next trip out. You can take whatever combination of rum and pirates you like, Maoris. More rum means more profits. More pirates means more chance of stealing florins off other players. Depends how you want to play. Once you've been all up and down the map a few times, there will come a point when someone returns to their galleon to find, oh my, I've run out of rum. At this point, once they've combined the cards from their rum runner with those under their galleon map and have double checked they definitely have no rum cards left, they can end the game with the words, I be home and dry. Crikey. Once the end of the game has been declared, only cards below decks on your galleon count in the final score. If your rum runner piece is on your galleon spot, you can combine all your cards. But if your rum runner piece is out sailing, you have to abandon your rum runner hand in the middle of the map. Tis lost at sea. Do count your score! First add up how many florins you have aboard your galleon. A 10 florin card worth 10 points, a 5 florin card is worth 5 points, and so on. Then add on to that score an extra 2 points for every member of crew aboard your galleon. The player with the highest score wins. Glory at last! What? How did that happen? I sold all my rum and you still got some left. Nah, I sold mine for a better price though, you scurvy seagull. Ah, at least I came second. Not like the poor Emerald Drake there. They had a of cash 
stash on that rum run. Ha <laughs> ha, but never made it back in time to stash their winnings. Ha, <laughs> lost at sea, gutted. Yep, the timing's important, me eyes. And by the way, if you suspected I had more points than you, you could have delayed ending the game till you'd been out thieving again to build up your all. You don't have to end the game the minute you're out of rum if you don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. A few closing words. So, the beginners and kids version of the game is mostly the same as the main game, but with various bits removed, and the skirmish fight rules simplificated. Once you've had to go through this simpler version, you can start adding in the more complicated bits and pieces, such as the wind, the tide, the whirlpools, and more gore into your games. You can add them on, one at a time, in whatever order you like. The one thing to remember is that if you add the whirlpools before more gore, go through the whirlpool pack and remove the eight Morgor cards, or it'll just get confusicating. You can also use the skirmish rules from the main game if you like. You'll find them in video number two. Sometimes when you've got lots of pirate, these rules work better, because you can keep some great fighters secret up your sleeve. Speaking of lots of pirates, shall we tell them about Ponshard and- No, all right then, it is rather fun. Ponshard and here, the fourth port, ain't like the others. You can't sell rum, and you can't buy pirates, but my word, if you dock here, you do get three pirates for free! The top three off the pack are yours to keep. You don't get a choice, mind. That's only for when you buy them. So they could all be rubbish. But free pirates! Free pirates! Blimey. Make sure you keep to the nine card maximum hand after calling near those swabs. Remember, you can throw your worst overboard to Morgoth's hard. Right then, that's about it. Page 19 of the rule book gives you the breakdown for this simplified version of the game. And there's page references and all that other bits there in the book. Don't worry, there's also lots of pictures. Lots of pictures. There's also these two other videos. So take a look through these two if something be vexing you. Happy sailing and stealing, shipmates. Next, let's take a look at the two player version. Playing for two. Me faithful friends, we finally finish on a quick run through of the two player version. As a general guide, if we don't say it's different here, then you can assume that the rules are the same as for the main game. So please have a little watch of the other two videos first. It'll help make sense of this one. The one huge difference with the two player version is that although each player still has just one galleon, they have control of two rum runners each this time. So, to set up the game, lay everything out as for the main game, but discard the following. The black and the red galleon mats go back in the box, along with the green galleon mat, green rum runner card, and the green playing piece. Group the yellow galleon mat with the red and yellow rum runner cards, and place the red and yellow rum runner pieces on the Saracen gold galleon spot on the map. Next, group the blue galleon mat with the black and blue rum runner cards and place these black and blue rum runner pieces on the blue anchor galleon spot on the map. Your galleons are holding more than in the main version of the game, so deal each player the following to stow below decks on their galleon. Right, 23 cargo cards, 6 crew cards, 2 1 flooring cards, 2 3 flooring cards, and 2 5 flooring cards. Put this little lot face down underneath your galleon mat. From what you've got on your galleon mat, you can now load two nine-card rumler hands. The coloured rumler cards will help you keep track of what you have aboard each boot. You can use the recommended first hand to get you going quickly, or choose whatever combination of cards you like. Once you're loaded, you're ready to sail. Taking to the waves. Sailing across the map is governed by the same rules of tide and wind as the main game. The only variation is rather than 9 moves per run runner per turn, you have a total of 15 moves that you may divide between the two however you like. For example, let's look at the captain of the Saracen Gold here. They're using 5 of their moves to get the red run runner into Falmouth, and the other 10 to get the yellow run runner back to the galleon to stash, cash and restock. Here the captain of the blue anchor has decided to chuck all his eggs into one basket and move the black rum runner as far as possible up the map toward Penryn. It is important that you keep the coloured rum runner cards with the correct hands. This will help you keep track of what's aboard each of the rum runners. This is necessary as you can only sell barrels at port if they are on the rum runner that has reached port. You can also only deal with peril and strife whirlpool situations using the cards in the rum runner and that cross that whirlpool. You can only swap cards in and out of the rum runner that is in Morgor's cave. And you can only unload and reload the rum runner that's on the galleon spot on the map. Let's see what happens if the captain of the blue anchor wants to sacrifice the flooring card to Morgor for a little extra nudge. 
after taking the 15 moves, they can sacrifice the flooring card by showing it and placing it into Morgor's Ord. They can take this card from whichever run runner they like, but the extra moves only apply to the run runner they place Morgor next to. Just a couple of other details. If you sail both your rum runners into the same port, you can swap cards between them if ye like. And finally, where skirmishes and duels is concerned, you cannot attack the other player with both of your rum runners at once, tempting as it may be. Only one-on-ones are allowed. For example though, if the captain of the blue anchor did manage to sail into this position, they would be allowed to attack both the red and yellow rum runners in the same turn, but in two consecutive raids. Either with the same crew both times, or with one then the other. A parting salute. My dears, that was an awful lot of information. Delivered in an awful selection of cod pote accents. We hopes it was helpful. We'll raise a glass of vintage rum to you. I wish ye the best of profits and plunder. Arr. Arr.